And uh, I'm going to start the YouTube highlight from right here. And uh, as you all know, this will be uploaded to YouTube. And you guys can, you know, link it on your guild forums whenever you're dealing with a fight or, you know, put, give it to a friend who you know is working on it. It's just, that's the point of these videos. Um, now, I mean, the stream just got started about a month ago or a month and a half ago. So, you know, wasn't really able to hit the cutting edge of DS, but, you know, for the remainder of the game of WoW, you know, we're going to have these out right about exactly when the content's finished. So as soon as we kill a boss, we'll start doing walkthroughs like uh, one a week and things like that. So, you know, it'll be available for the masses instead of just the people that have kind of been a little late to the party. But uh, either way, like I said, we're going to finish this one off. Today is about Hagara. Um, you know, the fight is a little bit harder on 10 man than 25 man, but, uh, you know, we're going to look at it from both aspects of the fight. I've got some clips that I'm going to show you guys from both 10 man and 25 man, and then we can go from there. Um, let's see, go ahead and open if you guys want. We're just going to go through the abilities and things like that. We'll start it in the dungeon journal. I uh, just want to go over all these, that way everybody understands what we're going over and things like that. <clears throat> and then once we're done with that, like I said, I'm going to go through a couple of videos that I have prepped and ready for the stream. And then at that, after we're done with those, we can answer any questions that you guys have as far as uh, being viewers. You know, you can have either logs, videos, or whatnot that you want me to look over, and then we can go from there. All right, so uh, again, this started with a dungeon journal, ice lance. Uh, let's go ahead and put it on 25 for right. Um, this is the beam that comes out from three different ports. There's three different ice lance targets, and you just basically dip in and out of the beam. There's a little bit of advanced strategy with that if you've got a good tank, uh, DK tank preferably. Uh, any tank can really do it, but uh, you know you kind of want to bounce those around between um, people because you can't have one person soak the whole thing. And of course, my dog starts barking as soon as the stream starts, so that's wonderful. Um, I'm pretty sure he just likes the attention. I'm not sure. Ice tombs, nothing real special here. Uh, you get an arrow over your head, stack behind the balls. We'll go over positioning for those. Uh, shattered ice, this is an ability the boss casts. Uh, the thing is, this is a lot more of a problem on 10 man than 25 man because what happens is, um, you know, you if you have too many stacks of the ice lance, it increases. You, if you if you hover over this, what happens is uh, it um, increases. Frost damage taken by 25% per hit, okay? So what's going to happen is if you get too many stacks of the Ice Lance and you get hit by the Shattered Ice, you're just going to get comboed and fall over, okay? So that's why you got to make sure that you stagger in and out, you know, two to three stacks per person, rotating it off one to the other, okay? Uh, ice Tombs, if you don't kill people out of these, I'm pretty sure they end up dying. I think it's like Cindergosa. I don't know. To be honest with you, I've never really seen people die inside of an Ice Tomb, so I couldn't answer that. Um, Focus Assault, this is the only thing the tank really needs to worry about on this fight. Just, uh, you can't really block it, but you can absorb it. Another benefit to having a Death Knight. Um, and as well as the well time mitigation, okay? Uh, you know, with Death Strike. Sit on your runes. She doesn't hit hard outside of the Focus Assault. As soon as you know, see the Focus Assault casting, get one or two Death Strikes off. You won't have any issues living. Uh, the fight alternates between one, and two fa one of two phases. We'll just go over those real quick. Frozen Tempest, this is the Ice Phase. Uh, what happens is... Um, Binding, she basically creates four ice crystals around the room. Okay, you'll be able to see those in the video. And what happens with that is you have to have the raid rotating around the room, killing all of those. And once every one of them is dead, you exit the phase. It's the same as that. That component's the same on LFR, normal, and heroic. The added addition to heroic is the fact that there is a debuff during this phase. Okay, so you're going to have to deal with the frost flake. The frost flake is what. Uh, if it's a debuff that goes on you and it slows you if you get hit by it and you have to run into the middle to get it dispelled because when you get dispelled it drops a patch of frost that slows everything that's on that patch so the biggest thing um, about this is make sure you have everybody watching your debuffs and make sure that they run into the middle to get it dispelled we'll go over healing strategies and things like that icicle uh, pretty self-explanatory I mean it's just a huge thing of ice that drops on the ground and does a lot of damage. The big thing about that is you can use it to help you or it can actually hurt you. Um, whenever you get hit by the ice, it's going to knock you whichever way that you're on the side of the circle. So if you're on the back of the circle, it's going to knock you backwards into the oncoming uh, meat grinder thing. Uh, if you're on the 
Front side, you can use if you if say you're falling back in a quadrant and you know you can't catch back up because you got the debuff. Stand, you can let it hit you and knock you back to the front of your quadrant and buy yourself enough time to either get dispelled or make it to the middle. So you can use this to help you, but uh, it can also hurt you. So just keep that in mind. Ice wave. That's these are the meat grinders that go around the outside. If you get hit by them, you're dead. All right, pretty self-explanatory. Watery entrenchment. Uh, this deals. 12% of the maximum HP every second, okay? So we're going to go over uh, optional strats for how to deal with the ice phase and things like that. Um, that one of them is just stack your raid inside, including melee, and just have the ranged uh, DPS to each, each one of the crystals from the middle, all right? That way you take full advantage of healing circles and all that. It's very viable. We started doing it about, you know, a month after we ended up killing it the first time. Okay, so that's the frost phase. Also, during both the frost and lightning phase, she's completely invulnerable to all attacks. Something to keep in mind. Uh, lightning storm. What happens here is there are, on 25-man heroic, there are four pillars. And on 10-man heroic, there are eight pillars. Okay, so there's actually more on 10-man. Don't really know why. It's just the way that it is. Um, I'll go over in depth how to deal with both of those. The way that these work is you have an ad that spawns. It's called a bound lightning elemental. There's only going to be one. You pull it to a pillar. The pillar then becomes charged, and that's where you emit your um, charges from. And it goes through each person like a conduit, and you see here the lightning just bounces through each other. And the whole time that you're in this phase, uh, where is the stacking debuff? Um, I am not seeing. I was going to read over the lightning debuff that you get in that phase, but uh, I'm trying to find it here. Either way, you get a lightning debuff that stacks during the phase. The longer you're in the phase, the more damage it starts doing, okay? So we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, that's the end of the dungeon drone thing. We'll get to the meat of these, and that's just going through the videos, okay? So. I'm going to go ahead and um, deal with the video stuff. So let's see here. Log out and link you guys the video that we're going to start with. We're actually going to start with the 25 man. I'll put this in stream chat for you guys. Okay. This is a clip from this past week's 25 man kill. Uh, go ahead and get this buffer in 720. Shouldn't really take that long, okay. Um, this is, I'm going to go over and hit play. Those are, yeah, I'll get this full screen for you guys. We're going to hit play in this. And we'll see what's, uh, get some sound in here. This is, I'm going to go over and hit play. Okay, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I, it's not a lot of uh, solid sound that you need to deal or hear in this video, but you can have it playing if you want. Okay, so basically what happens here, you see the four raid icons on the ground of where each one of these uh, frost, or I'm sorry, these lightning conduits are going to spawn. So you have to uh, make sure that you have each one of these connected. And a general rule of thumb is it takes seven people. You could probably get by with six, but... You have seven people connecting each one, okay? And you only need to have three different groups. You don't need to have one between each one because we always start it from the X and then you have one connecting from the X to the diamond, one connecting from the X to the triangle, and then one connecting from the triangle to the square. So you have three different groups. There are different strats for this, man. You can make a full box. You can make an X. You can make, I, don't, I mean, whatever you want to do. The bottom line is, you know, you have the people have assigned spots. You can set up in those spots. Make sure people remember those. We have a macro that we post every week just to make sure there's no confusion. You can't just wing it. You know what I mean? I mean, you probably could, but it's going to be retarded raid damage and things like that. Okay, you have people get in their assigned spots, and you'll be able to see how it plays out as we get there. Okay, so I'm going to just walk you through how it's going. I'm taking this on my death night. So, uh, in my opinion, that's the strongest tank class for this fight just because of the controlled mitigation as well as the um, as well as the AMS for the ice lances okay 
So as you see here, I just have everybody do a quick dry run. It takes like 30 seconds, maybe a minute, depending on how slow people want to be. Everybody just sets up in their own in their own line of where they need to be. And again, we have seven people between each one of the crystals, okay? And uh, we're going to go ahead. All right, so we're good. I do a ready check. We're good. Make sure everybody has a food buff, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. It's a pretty quick fight. Nothing super long. Okay. Oh, uh, one sec. Okay. So here we go. We pull here. Um, Shattered Ice is already going out. It's not that big of a deal just because there's no ice lines that have been out. You see the focus of salt here. I barely, I don't even dip below 75% just because of having, uh, you know, probably shields as well as my blood shields. Um, at this point, what you, this is why I say a DK is so good. You see the three different ice lance targets coming in from all three areas. Basically, what I end up doing is soaking all three of these. This makes it tons easier, keeps anyone from getting gibbed, and it just the only healing that's going out at this point is on the tank. Okay, so what happens here? I mean, if you're going to tank this and you're going to do this, you need to, uh, you know, get a major cooldown up because you will get pretty wrecked here. You see, I'm soaking all three. Uh, I'm trying to see what cooldowns I end up popping here. Looks like I popped AMS. Okay, so I didn't, uh, and I popped IVF, okay. So I popped Shield Wall and AMS for that set, just because that was all three. And then you go into the Frost Phase. Now, a good thing that some people might not know about this fight is whenever you're going into the fight, before you even pull, let's see, what we're at 307. I'm going to back this up, all right. As you can see here, you look at Hagara. Do you see the Frost brand on her weapons? That lets you know what phase you're going to be going into first, okay. So you, if you don't want to be in Frost Phase first, if you want to be in... Lightning phase first, you just have a hunter pull and feign death and she'll reset and you do that until you get the lightning on her weapons. Okay, so you can make you can choose which phase you want to go into first. If you have your say your guild stronger at doing the lightning phase than they are the frost phase, you do it that way. Say it's vice versa, you do it that way. You know what I mean? So you have that choice. That's just a quick little useful bit of information. Alright? So we're gonna go back to where we were here, three oh seven. Gonna hit play. So what happens at this point? We do a strat where you stack everyone in the middle during this phase, except melee. We actually have our melee go around and help out kill kill uh, the frozen binding things, okay? Uh, even though we have our range stack in the middle, you still need them to get out until the meat grinder comes out, the ice wave, whatever you want to call it. When that comes out, then they're clear to go back in, okay? So go ahead and hit play. Let this play out. There's a watery entrenchment. You see the circles that are icons. A quick thing to notice about the or to note about these circles is you can move through them as long as the icon the graphic is still on the ground they do not fall until that graphic disappears so as long as that graphic's still there you're clean to run on it okay but once it goes away that's when it's falling so that's when you want to make sure that you're not underneath it all right so we're going to hit play here see this one here it won't fall until that goes away all right meat cutters are coming out Ice wave, we just call them meat grinders, whatever. At this point, all you really need to be doing is watching your debuff. Uh, I pop VB for the healers in the middle, help them catch up. All right. Now, what you want to make sure you're in the habit of doing is you don't want to be. I'm kind of pretty far back. I'm like borderline. All right. I'm like, unless you have something like a heroic leap or anything like that, you need to make sure that you're always in the front half of your quadrant. All right, because it's just bad news. If you leave yourself in the back side of the quadrant, all right. Um, you see here, I just dipped in to go back out and then get on that because it was the last one. All right, then we get back in. It's pretty self-explanatory, or a pretty very easy point, point of the transition at this point. All right, she takes amplified damage uh, during this phase. So you want to make sure you're popping cooldowns and things like that because you're going to get uh, double damage during this during this time for like I think it's 15 seconds or something. Uh, after you go into the phase, that's the buff there you see for amplified damage. All right, and coming out of this, have it again. All right, uh, we use two tanks on this fight just because it's quicker than, uh, I mean, we do three alt raids. I'm tanking it with Opti on his Paladin. He doesn't really have any uh, DPS gear on there. And, uh, I mean, it's just there's nothing wrong with two tanking it. It's not a DPS check anymore. Uh, the way that you want to do tombs, tombs go out. You want to get them behind the boss and then pull the boss a little bit away from them. That way people can spread, you know, combust, uh, pestilence, uh, just any type of cleave AE and things like that. You want to use that to help you get the ice tombs down, all right? 
So, I mean, everything up to this point is pretty self-explanatory, or not necessarily self I keep saying that, but it's not necessarily self-explanatory as much as it is very easily, uh, it's a good way to put it, you know, nothing's really that hard up until this point in the fight. And the fight, to be honest, in 25-man is just not that difficult. I'm going to get to a 10-man video right after this, and uh, it gets a little bit more difficult in 10-man, but, uh, you know, it's still, it still takes a little bit of coordination to pull off, all right? So what happens here, you saw this one ice land spawn by itself. That's because the other people that they were targeting were behind ice tombs and it didn't target them until ice tombs were gone. You can use that to your advantage or, you know, whatever if you feel like it. So make sure that you're, I'll go ahead and show you guys that again. All right, you can see here, everybody was behind those ice tombs. You only see one ice lance out here. Now that the ice tombs are gone, these are able to target people. So, I mean, you basically cheese the first half of those ice lances. It's not that big of a deal. As you see me here, solo soaking this one just because... The, you know, you rotate tanks every phase for cooldowns. You could easily solo tank it. Uh, we just rotate just because. There's no reason not to on 25 men. I mean, didn't want to uh, deal with changing up comp or anything like that. All right, now here's the lightning phase. These are the two phases it alternates between. All right, so you pull the bound lightning elemental. Everybody gets in their position. As you see here, it's going to go down. It activates, it activates this uh, lightning conductor here. Okay, during this phase, there are also, you see my mouse cursor here is hovering over a little, it looks like a baby ring of ice, all right? And what happens whenever these are, ha you need to move out of this because it hits you for a decent amount of damage, all right? It's not going to one-shot you, but it's just damage the healers don't need to be healing, okay? The only time that you really need to stay inside of it is if you need to make sure that you connect your link to the next person. If that's you, pop a cooldown, hopefully you'll be okay, all right? So what's going to happen here? We just do the three group strat. Like I said, you can have you can make an X or whatever you want. You see here, as soon as it's there, you break the chain, and we're already out of the phase. All right, so done deal. Okay, uh, we had 13 stacks of lightning storm. Um, that's pretty good. You don't really want to, you know, once you're getting around the 20 range, it starts getting pretty brutal on healers. Uh, that right there was. It's not even the optimal way to do it. I think somebody showed. That the most optimal way to go would be, uh, somebody said an X. I'm not even uh, sure. I'm sure there's a lot of different possibilities. But either way, you know, as long as you're in and out in 15 or so stacks, you're doing it pretty good. All right. So that was 13. We lost during this vuln. All right. And uh, I think we actually may kill it before the next phase even starts. So you see here, I have the boss on me. I go ahead and get in. I can't really act. Uh, I can't officially get into all th three of these, so I just tank one because it's better than tanking none. All right, don't even need that many cooldowns for that. Tombs going out, stack them behind the boss for AE and things like that. You see that hunter back there making everybody else's life hard. All right, so here we go. AOE down tombs. Had a PS for that focus assault. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. So we end up killing it. That's only two phases total that we went through. Like I said, 25 man. Pretty, pretty chill, man. It's nothing uh, super, super strenuous or anything like that. 10-man, it is quite a bit harder. So we're going to do it at this point. I'm going to show you guys a quick 10-man walkthrough. We're going to go through this and then open it up to questions and things like that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to let this buffer at 720p. I went ahead and threw it in the chat for you guys. And uh, we'll go over some of the differences between 10 and 25, okay? Um buffered enough okay this one I'm doing on a paladin so you get to see it from a different tank POV and things like that uh, I think I actually incorporated a wipe in this as well this is two pulls okay so what's gonna happen here the first pull you see uh, we got it coming in here shattered ice going out you can dark sim that I saw somebody mention that in chat earlier it's a uh, pretty substantial amount of damage um, you know, I don't always remember to do it on my Death Knight just because Dark Sim's so shitty that uh, most of the time I don't even have it on my bar. I switch it out for, like, uh, different other abilities, things like that, like Parachute Cloak. I have more views for Parachute Cloak almost than I do Dark Sim. Um, but anyways, you see your Focus Assault hurts a Paladin a lot more just because you can't block it. It's pretty annoying. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tank two Ice Shards here, or Ice Lances, as my Paladin. I'm pretty sure I will... Yeah, I shield wall this. Still take a pretty substantial amount of damage. Even with show wall up, you see, I mean, I, I pretty, it caps at 20. 20 stacks. 
If you got hit, if I got hit with the shattered ice there, I probably would have died. But you know, whatever. Just rolling the dice. Uh, this phase not so hard in ten man. It's the lightning phase. It's a little bit harder of a fight, and just dealing with the shattered ice on ten man is a little bit more of a pain in the ass than it is twenty five man. Just because there's so many, the percentages of it targeting someone with uh, ice lance stacks is a lot higher than it is in twenty five man. Just because you still have three ice lances and you have less than half the amount of people as you do in 25. Alright, you see here is a guy with a debuff, heroic leap in, get a dispel. You get a dispel inside the water bubble, it's not going to leave the patch on the outside here. Um, so going to fast forward here. Is it actually backed up, try to use that to my advantage to knock me forward. I'm not sure if I actually am able to do that in this. Let me go ahead and let it play. That way I can show you guys what I'm talking about. You can actually use that uh, ice lance, or... Icicle falling uh, to your advantage if you want to catch back up. Let's see if I do it. No, looks like I'm avoiding them. Um, go ahead and fast forward here. So uh, this is a run that we did with fifth string alts and a buyer. So it was pretty brutal. I'm pretty. I think we hit the enrage on this fight. Uh, it's pre it was pretty. It was pretty rough. So. This is about as sketch as you can be and still make it happen. At this point here, you see I tried to be Rambo and uh, run through to the other side and help kill this parabining. I ended up having to use Lay on Hands on myself because I was going to die. It was a pretty bad decision on my part, but, uh, you know, noted. Probably won't do it again, but yeah, that's that. So I went over there trying to help get a little bit of damage on that. So casting some exorcisms and uh, dipping in and out. Help me get some DPS on that. Um, need to get to the next phase here. So you said the damage is pretty bad in here. Alright, phase change. This is a one tank fight. Two to three healers on ten man. Alright. Alright, so my shield wall's down. I'm not going to, you know, proactively jump in a ton of those on my paladin just because of, you know, not really having uh, the mitigation for those that a death knight does. See me dipping in and out of these. Helping keep stacks off people. Two tombs on ten man. It's a focus assault. Uh, AD that one. Okay. Um, nothing too fancy here. Just got to bounce or deal with ice lances on top of focus assaults. All right, here's where it gets a little bit more tricky in 10 man. Okay, it's whenever you're going into the lightning phase. This is the main reason I uploaded a difference between 10 and 25 man. Okay, if you pause it here, you will see there are eight conduits on 25 or 10 man as opposed to just four on 25. Again, don't ask me why. That's just how they do it. Now the easiest way to do this on 10 man is you have two teams of two, as you can see here. All right, we get the lightning con or we get the uh, lightning elemental. We drop it here, and me and uh, Cameron are going to be going left, and I think it was Bushino and Diggs that were going to go right. You go in teams of two, and no, and if you're not in the teams, as you see, I move out of that thing that I told you guys to avoid. Let it go off, then move back in. Okay, if you're not part of the two teams of two, all you do is you go stand in the middle, okay? And the reason that you stand in the middle, remember I told you guys I uploaded a wipe, okay? So what, what, the reason I uploaded the wipe is just to show you guys what can go wrong if you don't have everyone that's not in the two groups of two, you know, you can chain the middle and it causes a wipe. So I'm going to hit play here with a little bit of volume and just let you guys see how the wipe occurs, all right? Okay, so see, I'll pause it right here. So what's happening? Here is the healer right underneath my buff bar. They are chaining the group in the middle, okay? And that ends up making them take a ton more damage that can be healed through, all right? So you need to make, this is a reason that you do not stack, uh, or you do not have anyone that is not in the middle of the middle. All the while, the way you do, and, you know, I'll, I'll quickly fast forward to the next pull, but I'll let you guys watch this play out and just watch watch how the wipe happens. Just watch raid frames and the amount of damage that's going out. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous if you have the entire raid chain together, all right? You see the whole middle just got nuked down. Okay, so that was the wipe. Uh, go ahead and fast forward. You see people, I mean, just drop like a, a sack of rocks. Uh, is, real quick to explain how you do this with your partner 
is the person always, you want to put the person that's got more mitigate, like one of the tank or whatever, is going to be at the base, and then he connects it with someone else, and then they, they run through it. I mean, he died because there's no healing, but that's really what you want to have doing. So that was a wipe. No big deal. We're just going back in, pull it again. So I'm going to fast forward here, quickly go back to more or less the same point. Uh, you see here, these are lightning. Remember, that's what, that's what she shows whenever it's going to be. You can tell what the first phase is going to be. So we already know this is going to be a lightning phase just because that's what's on her weapons. So we're going to go ahead and pull. All right. Nothing special. Focus assault. Same stuff I already showed you guys. All right, so we're going to watch the phase change go into action here. I'll just walk you guys through it. And this is the only major difference, again, between 10 and 25. Okay. Focus assault's going off. Phase change coming in three seconds. Okay, here goes the phase change. Lightning conduit with the add. Have to find the add. There it is. Pull it over to this one. Doesn't even really matter which one you start on, to be honest with you. It just, you split the room in half. It's just a symmetric uh, path for each person. All right, so what's going to happen here? Everybody gets in the middle, and these two people are going to the right, and me and Opti are going to the left. And you'll see how it works between me and Opti. And this is the key part of doing 10 man. And if you're, if you guys are wanting to do 10 man, pursue. You know, getting the kill on heroic, you have to understand how to do the lightning phase, and this is the exact, you know, most optimal way to deal with it. Okay, you see me get the base, it connects to Opti, it connects, he connects it. Same thing, we just run around together. I get it, connect it to him. It's not the smoothest in the world, but uh, you know, we still got it done. And then this one here connects to him, and then we connect it to that one. So. You know, you're in and out of the phase, 16 stacks, pretty healable. The only person dead is a buyer. I mean, but uh, like I said, this was a sales run on some pretty scrubby alts. So, you know, that is that on a 10-man. That's how you do the phases, and then the rest of the phase, just rinse and repeat. Deal with tombs, deal with ice lances, deal with the shattered ice. One quick thing to note about 10-man uh, is if you need to be quick on... Uh, cooldowns for the shattered ice going out. If you have a disc priest, or if you have a holy pally, prop pally, red pally, whatever, you just have them have a have an assist target macro. So basically, it automatically targets the person the boss is targeting, and have it also cast either hand of sack, power word shield, you know, anything like that. It's going to be really good to have. So you can as soon as you, I mean shattered ice is a pretty quick cast. So you just you know, you, you, you spam your button that you have it bound to, the macro, and it can put a hand of sack on that person and save their life or something like that. Okay. Um, this guy's asking, do you think that, that tactic is better than someone else's? I have no idea who that is, and I'm not sure what tactic you're talking about. But uh, I think that is the smoothest and easiest way to do it that I know of. So, I mean, if there is some other better way to do it, more power to you. But that's a way that you can do it 100% of the time, no issues as long as the people... Uh, do it correctly. All right, so um, yeah, that's that for Tin Man. Just wanted to show you guys how to deal with the ice crystals and what could happen. I'm sorry, the lightning conduits and what could happen if they go wrong. Uh, as you see here, I'm actually going to show you what happens whenever the boss enrages, just because it's a sight that not many people get to see at this point in stage of the instance. And uh, real quick, I'm glad I actually didn't turn it off. This is what happens whenever you do not dispel the debuff inside of the circle. You see this huge frost trap looking thing? Okay, it's going to slow everyone around it. A uh, quick thing to note about dispels. It, are, it doesn't have to be a dispel that gets it off of you. It is the fact that you can, you can freedom it off. You can, sh I think you can shapeshift. I mean, there's multiple ways to get rid of the debuff, okay? You don't always have to have a healer to spell. I know for a fact freedom works. Uh, I think there's something you can talent into as a feral druid and pop dash. It works. Uh, I'm not sure which talent it is. Probably a PvP talent or something. But uh, I mean, each class that's got things like that is shape shifting, freedom mechanics. Uh, a lot of those will remove will remove the uh, debuff. You got to be careful about that though. You need to make sure that you're inside the bubble whenever you use that, or you're just going to drop it in the middle of the uh, you're going to drop it in the middle of the outside area. Um,
Yeah, you guys are talking about different phases, like everybody in the, the raid having, you know, designated spots during that phase. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, like I said, there's there's obviously multiple ways to do it. That's the way that we've done it every single time on 10-man. Um, you see here, I've got a frost flake on me. It's what needs to happen. You run in the middle, and then uh, freedom myself, and it drops it off, and then I'm ready to go. All right, so not that big of a deal. Pretty easy to d uh, maintain. The biggest thing is just make sure you're watching your debuffs, okay? You can't be that asshole that doesn't know he has it on him until the you know ice wave is right behind you and then start calling for a dispel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let it play out here and let you guys see what happens when the enrage occurs. She's already enraged. Now, one thing about this, as long as you... She can hit enrage whenever, she's still going to be taking the amplified damage for the duration and not doing anything. Okay, so we knew we had to do about 10% damage within the Vaughn to be able to kill the boss because she was enraged. Okay, so everybody's going full out here, pop wings, you know, do as much as you can. She comes out at probably like 2 or 3%. I pop all the cooldowns that I have up and just try and stay alive here. You see shield wall, AD, all that, run away, and, uh, you know, got the kill. So that, you know, if you're borderline for a guild as far as damage output and things like that, you know, as long as you can get to about 10% during one of those phases, you're going to be able to DPS through the enrage. You know, we had three people dead there. So um, hopefully that shows you guys a little bit of insight on the... 10 versus 25, man, some of the different ways you can do the lightning phases and things like that. So um, one thing uh, I guess I'll do at this point is open it up to questions. If anybody has any questions about the fight or has a log that they want me to check out or anything like that, and we will, we will go through those and just uh, see what we can uh, do for any of the questions you guys have. Let's see here. Um... Okay, so we got a parse. This guy wants me to take a look at this parse of theirs. This is Pillow Fort. We're going to look at, let's see, kills, Hagara, 418. Okay. Um, when do I use Mirror of Broken Images? I use that during, if I know I'm going to be taking multiple ice lances, uh, I pop it then. If, I, if it's up, I also use it during the lightning phase. Uh, and just say those are the two main points that you really want to be using it. It's no point to use it during the uh, ice phase and uh, outside of the ice lances. So one of those two times. You either use it during the lightning phase or during the point in time you're taking ice lances. Uh, what's the best way to deal with ice lances in 10 man? Um, probably just have people rotating in and out. Like, there's going to be three. You just need to make sure people ha understand they need to switch it on and off with someone else. Okay, you can get three stacks, let someone else dip in. They get three. Your three fall off. You switch back and forth, okay? So, the biggest thing is you can't really get more than that because you're just going to get one shot by the shattered ice, all right? Uh, as a safety measure, like I said, you can have someone make a macro that's like assist the boss, cast powered shield or assist the boss, cast hand of sack, things like that and you can cast that on the person that's being targeted by Shattered Ice, and it will dampen the damage substantially uh, by the Shattered Ice hitting the person. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this guy's kill here. We'll get their damage done and just look at kind of how many phases they went through of each one. Uh, okay, so we got a Blood Death Knight. Let's, let's check out what... Um, Oh, this guy here said, she only casts Shattered Ice in front of her. We keep it from casting by only having the tank in front of her. I'm not actually sure if that's right. Uh, I've never really heard that before, and I'm pretty sure she can turn to cast uh, the spell. So that's something I would have to check on for you. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't think that I've uh, heard of anybody even saying that before. Um... Yeah, on 10 man, the tanks, so, fo tanks, all of the... I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, deal with the Focus Assault. You guys can have... You can have a, a Holy Paladin taunt it ranged, and then the tank retaunt before it gets to the... I and mean, there's a lot of different ways you can deal with the Focus Assault, but pretty much as a tank, you can cool down through the assaults on any tank class, as long as you have something like a Disc Priest in the raid, or a Holy Paladin that, you know, feed you Hand of Sex, along with your Shield Wall and, you know, AD, Div Prot, whatever. Um, 
Let's see. Alright, so we have another one here. Uh, this is... Okay, so we have two, we're gonna have two here. Um, what are you guys really wanting me to look at in here? Just look at, I can, right now I'll just start with looking at, uh, looking at tank cooldowns and things like that, and then anything else that you guys really want to know, just, uh, just mention it, and we'll see, we'll see what we got going on. Alright, uh, let's see, this is, this Grumpsy Guys Guild, someone said, and then we've got, yeah, this is the DK from Pillow Fort, okay, so, we're gonna take a look at the Pillow Fort DK and just look at first off let's look at how many times Okay, so it's like they only went through one phase each. This is the only time he had watery entrenchment, this is the only time that he had lightning conduit. Alright, so uh, just to get an idea of when the phases happen, let's actually also see Times used AMS. Only one use of Vamp Blood. Looks like he did that during the lightning phase. That's fine. Don't really need it outside of that, to be honest with you. Two IVF uses. Um, let's actually look and see how many Ice Lances he's taking as well. Okay, so he IBF while he was taking this Ice Lance. That's good. Uh, AMS while taking this Ice Lance. Reset his stacks. And then kept taking that one. Uh, I notice you're not really getting up to a ton of stacks. Uh, not really sure why that is. As a tank, you can tank it a lot higher than two stacks. So that would be the only thing I could really notice about that. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Dancing room weapon probably on the pull or near the front. And at the end, golem strength, pre-pot, and during the fight. That's probably during a vuln, I'm guessing. Hmm. Actually, no. Uh, maybe it started in a Vuln and then kept going. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, that's actually probably what it was. Because you see here the lighting conduit ends and then he strength pots. That's good. Um, let's see if he has his gloves macroed into VB. Probably so. Because it's used at the same time. And, yeah, so... Not a ton really wrong with that parse. Looks pretty solid. Three uses of bone shield. That's good. Had it up pretty much the entirety of the fight. So, I mean, as you can see here through this guy's parse, it's pretty strong having a Death Knight tank. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, let's see what else is being asked of this. Um, this one guy here is talking about grinding totem works on uh, Shattered Ice. That's good to know. Uh... Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy's guild and look at their overall damage done for the fight. This is a 655 fight and we have another Death Knight tank so we're just going to go ahead and look at his stuff. Same deal, let's look at how many times he got Ice Lances So before we even do that let's look at how many times he is getting Watery Entrenchment and Lightning Storm. Okay, so it looks like they went through Two ice phases and one lightning phase. We can check a look at his. Uh, whoops. Take a look at his ice lance stacks and then start breaking down his cooldowns. Okay. Uh, he already had two will procs, so that's that's. Let's take a look at IBF. See if that's. You see IBF after this will proc. I'm not sure if that's the result to not doing it prior. There's no ice lances occurring at that point, so it's a uh, pretty interesting bone shield uptime. Or that's blood shield. Bone shield right here. Uh, I could have refreshed bone shield at some point during this. Yeah, I mean, nobody's perfect. I'm just nitpicking. Uh, only two uses of AMS. I mean, if you're stacking up to eight ice lances, uh, you probably should AMS there. You have it up. I mean, you see here you didn't even use it for over a two-minute time frame uh, from there to there. So you could have milked another AMS or two out of that. 
Um, yeah, nothing super huge. The biggest thing you want to know as a tank is you have to start using cooldowns when you're tanking multiple ice lances as well as focus assaults, okay? Uh, and that also includes getting outside sources from, as you see here, pain suppression. Uh, I don't really know what went wrong here because you blew your pain sup your, and your ice bound within probably like a 30 second time frame. You really should never find yourself in those positions, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, your ice bound was up because you only used it twice. So, I mean, the you your will proc, it looks like you got a pain sup after your will proc, and then you popped IBF after the pain sup fell. So, you had to take enough damage to proc your will of Necropolis, then get a pain sup, then IBF, you know, and then Ice Lance has started. So... I'm not real sure. This is like a pretty messed up time frame. You need to make sure that you're you have your cooldowns better uh, better lined up to you know not be wasteful because right you used to you wasted you more or less wasted that paints up or wasted that IBF however you want to look at it you know uh, if anything you should have IBF save the paints up or the will plus the paints up should have been sufficient for you not to use the IBF so I'm not real sure what happened there that's something maybe you uh, you know that you can tweak something to do that better. So make sure that you're, you know, keeping track of that. Um, let's see, one hand of sack. During it looks like during some ice lance. So other, I mean, outside of that, doesn't look that bad. As far as damage, let's take a look at his damage done. Just for looks like they've got a enhancement shaman, rogue, shadow priest. DPS Warrior, Warlock, and Red Pally. Okay, so you guys have two Hand of Sash you guys can be using. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six DPS, one tank, and three healers, I'm guessing. Pretty traditional raid comp for the fight. Yeah, three three healers. Uh, Pally's kind of low, not really sure what he's doing. Maybe he died. Yeah, he died. Okay, so uh, just look at that. Actually, two people died to the watery entrenchment debuff. So it's like you guys are trying to stack in the middle and heal through that maybe and you had two people die. Uh, yeah, not really sure what's going on with that. So you got one up and then ice lances were killing people. Uh, that's why it is... Oh, this guy got comboed. 130. He got basically hit for almost 200k through the ice lance. Or, I'm sorry, from the shattered ice after getting hit with the ice lance. So that right there is an exact example or a perfect example of why you make sure to switch them off uh, from person to person and make sure no one gets comboed. That's a very high risk, uh, you know, issue in 10 mans. Okay. Um, is there any other questions that anybody has about this fight? Okay. It's not like a super in-depth fight. We can't milk out, you know, two hours worth of a walkthrough on this. You know, it is what it is. We're looking at about 50 minutes right now. Um, so, uh, I mean, in, barring any other question, I mean, that's pretty much a quick rundown of how it works, you know. Just learn how to, I mean, just take, if, you're, if your guild is learning it, take it a phase at a time. You know, if you just want to practice on the lightning phase, reset the boss until you get the lightning phase. Just do a pull, wipe it, do a pull, wipe, I mean, just... Get more pulls in on the lightning phase. And even if you're doing it on heroic, switch it to normal. Work on positioning. Get people uh, get people in the habit of getting in the right position and things like that. And then put it back on heroic. That way you're not, you know, instantly dying or whatever. I mean, the bottom line is you got to get people the repetition in and understanding their positionings or how to deal with things on 10-man or 25-man. And, uh, you know, just get, get it down to switching phases between 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2. And remember, you can control the phase that you're uh, that you're starting in. So that's completely up to you. The guy is asking about my MOS. I was communications 0659. I'm trying to do a show about WoW. You know, I appreciate your or your questions, but you know, I try to keep these focused and on topic of what's going on. You know, this isn't a personal Q&A session. So uh, yeah, it is 0659. That was my MOS. Anyways, moving on from that. Um, you know. If you guys still have questions, just toss them in chat. But uh, other than that, it's pretty much the wrap up. All right. Um, what we've got going on for the remainder of tonight 
Uh, we've got raids coming up in about an hour. Actually, well, this guy's got one more log. We've got to go through one more log here. Uh, what am I looking for in this log while I'm bringing it up? You guys just go ahead and say something. Source, cigar, the storm binder. Uh, what, what, what exactly are you wanting me to look for in this log? Popping two CDs per focus assault, but my holy pally can't keep me up. Okay, so we got, I'm guessing you're Lusa LOL. So this guy says he's having problems living through focus assault. So let's take a look and uh, see what's going on. Um, let's do a couple things. Let's get all these other logs out of here. What we're going to do is, this is a good one to keep up, this is a death log. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're going to look at Hagara. And we're going to look at, bam, okay. So she actually gets a buff. Uh, let's take a specific wipe. Let's look at, let's just take their, is there a specific pool you want me to look at, man? Do you know off the top of your head? Or do you just want me to kind of bounce through them? While we're waiting on him, I'll just go ahead and take a stab at the longer pull. Okay, so two focus assaults here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is pull number five. Okay, so what we're going to do for Luca is look at... Pull number five and see if he died. Let's just go this way. Let's go this route. Let's find a pull that he died on. He died on watery entrenchment here. So number five is not going to work. Let's try number four. Let's see if he died to focus assault here. Nope. Okay, so let's try pull number three. Odds are he's probably going to have focus assault death here, or not. Okay, so let's check out pull number one. Killing me, bro. I need a pull where you died to focus assault so I can find. Um, no, I mean, it's got, uh, like, let's look at, let's just look at full report. Details for you. Let's look at your deaths. Now let's find one. So we got lightning storm, water entrenchment, ice. Okay, so here are all your Hagara deaths, and none of these are due to uh, focus assault. So if you can find me a log specifically that you were dying to focus assault on, let me know. But what we're gonna do here, even though you you know you're you're still looking for the log, what we're gonna do is still look at your cooldown usage for the fight and we'll see what's going on. Um, no, it's fine, man. Here, I'll tell you what, what we're going to do here. We're going to be looking at... Let's go to your longest pull, the 216 pull. Okay, so that's what this is. You see there was two focused assault casts at the beginning. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to you and see what you're doing during these focus assaults. Um, being a paladin, it's a pain in the ass because I can't see when you're using your shield wall. But uh, outside of your shield wall, let's look at, uh, let's see, state of execution. Um, guarded by the light. Let's look, try to find div prot. Okay, so I don't see Arden Defender or div prot. So I'm assuming you did not die uh, die here. I mean, I'll go back to this. This is me tanking in on a paladin, okay? So this is the easiest way that I can show you. All right, so here we go. We're pulling. This is through a paladin POV. So I'll just walk you through what's going on here. All right, XO, wings, all that shit on the pull. 
Oh, blah. Okay, so we have the first focus assault. Let's see what I pop. I actually pop... Okay, I popped div prop, but it was latest shit. Okay, so that's a pretty shitty pull. As you can see here, uh, I mean, I have Druid Hots on me, probably a Beacon Heals. Nothing uh, pretty substantial at all. I mean, as long as you're top going into the Focus Assault, I popped Div Prot really late, and I still lived. So, uh, I mean, if the guy's telling you he can't keep you up through that, I'm not sure uh, what's, what's going on. Let's go ahead and get to the next one. The, a, a general rule of thumb is you can have shield wall for every once per or once every other phase. And during the times that you don't have shield wall, you need to use a paint sup, okay? And let's just keep track actually here. So that was one focus assault per phase. Here's the second one. This one right here, I shield wall, okay? No chance I'm dying with shield wall up. And then you're going into the frost phase, okay? So. There you go, the first phase right there. You need to have shield wall up from one of them. IBF, you know, guardian, whatever you want to call it. Survival instincts. You need to have that up for one of them. And then the other one during that, as a paladin, you can combo with AD and div prot. There you go. So that takes care of the two in that phase. Okay, so what's going to happen here, we're going to play, go through this. Boom, boom, boom. Get back to the next phase. Okay, so here we go. Shattered ice. Actually, maybe I missed one. I don't want to... Okay, see, I did miss one. Okay, she's going to do it coming directly out of this phase. Okay? One thing you can do here, since you're not really going to take extra damage at this point, that's when Guarded by the Light gains viability. Because what you can do, you can pop wings late during that vuln, okay? And you pop wings while you're topped and hit yourself with the Guarded by the Light. You're going to have a pretty huge shield padding on you for extra absorb. Okay, and during this one... You can, you could probably get by with a huge guard by the light shield and div prot, all right? So, you know, not a lot going on there. Ice lances are really fresh. There's not a lot of healing that needs to go out. You see here, I barely dropped. Uh, I popped div prot, and that was it. And like exactly what I said, I div prot and word of glory, all right? So that's one during this phase. Remember, your shield wall's down from the previous phase, so you're going to need a pain sub during this phase, all right? And you should be getting a pain sub on this one. I'm not even sure if I do or not. I do not. I probably pop, I think I pop AD here when I drop. Yeah, I did. Okay, so uh, that time right there, I didn't even get a paint up. That was the second focus assault, and I popped AD only. It's not going to kill you twice. So, I mean, AD is enough to get by. Uh, I popped uh, Div Prot the time before, so it wasn't up there. And I had a hand of sack at the end of that. I'm trying to figure out what... I know I definitely got a PS on one of these. It's probably this one coming up. So you're soaking this. Oh, my shield wall was back up because our DPS was so horrible. So either way, you get to pick. You're going to go through either two or three shattered ices per phase. Every other phase, you can use your shield wall unless your DPS is completely horrible like ours was here. And then you can show all every phase. But, I mean, if you're doing the fight at any respectable time, it's not going to be up for everyone. It'll be up for every other. So you have your shield wall up for one of them. You have a PS. So it's shield wall PS, shield wall PS. That's, during, that's every phase. You have one of those. And then during the off ones, you have div prot, you have AD, and uh, make sure you're taking advantage of uh, guarded by the light. All right? So uh, that's, that's pretty key as far as making that happen. So hopefully that helps you out. Pretty sure it's going to go in there. So that was... Yeah, three. I'm actually really curious now. Oh, okay, that was the wipe. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to fast forward through this. I'm going to look here. All right, guarded by the, okay, this is a more traditional phase. We're already coming out of the first phase. Shield wall will not be up. So you see focus assault here. Div prot and... I think I got a Word of Glory off. I don't remember. I'm trying to look at my buffs. I got a Word of Glory at the end. So Div Prod alone, that was enough to keep me up through that. Uh, I actually had a Hand of Sack on me as well. So that was Div Prod and Hand of Sack. No issue of dying. Okay, so let's go through. That was the first one. This next one here, there you go. There's the Paint Sup. Like I said, the shoe wall was down, so you used the Paint Sup. You're not going to die with the Paint Sup on you. Okay, so, and I also know I can help take these as well. 
with the paints up. I can help uh, soak ice lances. See me running around here soaking ice lances. And then you're going to get one more during this phase. Oh, that's weird. Hang on. That should have been three. Was it only two? Either way, man. I'm going to beat a dead horse. You get the picture. Just make sure you have cooldowns lined up for each one of these. And make sure that you let the healers know when you need paints up or when you need hand of sack. You don't really need more than about... I mean, 20% is probably borderline. Any mitigation over that is, you know, just icing on the cake. As long as you have Div Prot, a Hand of Sack, Arden Defender, uh, Paints Up, Shield Wall, you know, they, and even if they need to drop Barrier on you, whatever. I mean, you've got so many cooldowns at your expenditure. Just make sure you, you're not double stacking cooldowns and you'll be fine. And remember, Word of Glory every time on yourself. That's Guarded by the Light is a very, very strong talent for that reason. If you're ever... Um, you know, you need to make sure your top going into the focus assault, hit a uh, hit a word of glory on top of yourself, and you're you're good to go. All right, spirit link also if you've got a shaman in there, spirit link's also solid. Uh, you know, pretty much any 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 healer class minus a rest druid is going to be able to offer you some mitigation. All right, so hopefully that helped you out, and uh, cool stuff, man. If you got any laws you want me to take specific looks at when you go through and find them, no big deal. Just toss them to me on my Twitter or something like that. So. Um, you know, going through that pretty much filled up the show for us. If you guys have any questions I wasn't able to answer, make sure to put them on my Twitter. I'll go through and answer them when I have time. Uh, you know, Hagar isn't the hardest of fights, like I said earlier. But, uh, you know, if you ever find yourself having some issues with it, doing it on alts, you know, just wanting to understand things, trying to explain it to someone else, whatever, that's what these videos are there for. So um, I'll have this uploaded to my YouTube either tonight or in the morning. And to make sure you guys are subscribed to my YouTube channel and you guys will be able to, you know, be able to see... Uh, these walkthroughs as they get uploaded and not just those we have other shows like tomorrow is going to be a uh, raid leader discussion uh, you know we'll go over several topics in regards to that last week was 10 versus 25 man um, you know Wednesday is tank Q&A Thursday is tank talk uh, this Thursday we may or may not be going over some uh, beta tank talent changes and things like that and then Friday's special guest interview so every one of those gets uploaded onto my YouTube please 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 subscribe to my YouTube channel all right so help me keep doing this every single day by doing you know to be able to do that you guys have to make sure that you know following the channel subscribing to my youtube and things like that so uh hopefully you guys learned some stuff either way it was fun less than an hour we've got some raids coming up and uh you know we're going to be doing tonight is Tim man dragon soul on my paladin so you guys will be able to see you know us going through there with a buyer with pretty low gear at all so it's always fun there's a lot of wipes not to uh you know, promote wiping, but, uh, you know, just the truth of the matter, being in there on fifth string alts plus buyers, it gets a little ugly at times. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, yeah, as far as tank audits and things like that, it's full, full or probably five five or six out of heroic tonight on 10 man. Um, if you guys have what you want me to do audits, just put them on my Twitter, but uh, we try to do those on Wednesdays, man. I don't want to get in the habit of doing one or two because it just builds up and builds up and builds up, all right? Uh, so... Thanks again for watching. I'm going to chill out a little bit before the raid, leave the stream on, run a couple commercials, and uh, then we'll get the raid started in less than an hour. All right, so thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll catch you guys at raid time. Good talk.